Clay Patton on the Rural Radio Network, now with a check of your Midwest Sheep and Goat Market Report for the week ending March the 18th. Our Midwest Sheep and Goat Market Report is brought to you by Moline Seed and Fence. They're proud sponsors of the Midwest Sheep and Goat Market Report. Moline Seed and Fence is your local dealer for Riviera Custom Gates, Goat and Sheep Pens, along with Mountain View Sheep and Goat Equipment. Check out all their products at their website. That's MolineSeedandFence.com. Also want to let you know about an upcoming hair sheep sale, the Mid-States Hair Sheep Cooperative's 5th Annual Spring Sale set for March 25th at Wahoo Livestock in Wahoo, Nebraska. The sale's set for to start at 11.30. The Mid-States Hair Sheep Cooperative is expecting upwards of 600 head of high-quality hair sheep. Check out the consignments and more on the Mid-States Hair Sheep Facebook page. Well, as we take a look, the Midwest sheep and goat market higher once again this week, and really in a similar fashion, that ethnic demand continues to drive the midweight slaughter lamb and goat market extremely higher. There was only one sale that reported lower prices, uh, but I believe that was more related to volume than it was quality or general market trend. Uh, that was uh, Producers Livestock, San Angelo, Texas, but they also went from about 5,000 head through the ring last week to over 7,500 head this week. So you see that type of big increase and the number ahead coming through the ring, that could put some pressure on the overall market going forward. Uh, now, again, as we talked about, a lot of ethnic demand. As you go into those midweight slaughter lambs, slaughter goats, we've seen that, and it continues to be the strongest piece of the market. Once we get down the the quotes and stuff, you'll see that kind of as a general trend. Breeding stock up until this point, though, has been a pretty thin market. We haven't had a tremendous amount of volume to talk about, couple sets to talk this week, but over the next couple weeks, I'm already seeing several specials, whether it be at the sale barn level or uh, more private type sales, uh, but there's going to be several breeding sales coming up, and I think it's going to be a really good gauge as to where this market wants to go moving forward. What is the rancher's optimism right now? Are they going to be aggressive in purchasing that breeding stock back? Do they feel like this is a rebuilding point for them to get back into the market? Or is we are we still too dry across a good portion of the country? And are they going to step away from that market and not really want to buy into this trade? So I think it's going to be critical we watch those sales here over the next couple weeks. Outside of the sheep and goat market this week, though, there's been plenty of volatility with the U.S. and European financial markets and their institutions, liquidity, stability. It's all being called into question. Uh, from the agriculture perspective, though, and we'll talk more in the grain markets, but they try to just kind of steer clear, not watch too much what was happening over there. But when banks are called into question, of course, ag producers, oftentimes a line of credit may be borrowing money against uh, major purchases, equipment, land, that sort of thing. It's cause for concern. Uh, so I want ahead and I talked to the Nebraska Bankers Association. I talked with their president and CEO. I'm going to link there that interview back into the uh, the web form of this uh, one. So we won't put the full podcast here because it's about a 15 minute interview. It's a little bit longer form, uh, but go there, talk to him. And I specifically ask, you know, from an ag standpoint, especially farmers, they're getting ranked for planting season. Is there any concerns about liquidity, about availability of capital? Uh, and he said, you know, for the most part, there's not a tremendous amount to worry about. A lot of regional banks out through the Midwest, they just have a different type loan portfolio. They're invested in different, more hard a- assets. So uh, again, encourage you if you're worried or want to hear more on that. Check out that podcast there. Uh, but again, not having a tremendous amount of impact to the sheep and goat market itself, but something worthy of talking about just given the general market atmosphere this week. Highlighted quotes for the week. We go to Colby Livestock in Kansas. They sold 25 head of Dorper ewes weighing 159 pounds for 205 a hundred weight. That's $325 a head. The quote did not uh, list the ewes as exposed or bred, but given that type of strong price demand, it makes me a little bit less that they went back into the slaughter market. Very possible they did, but given that price, I'm wondering if they didn't return back to a breeding program. Colby also sold 36 head of Boarcross slaughter goats weighing 58 pounds for 425 a hundred weight. That's two forty six fifty a head. Centennial Livestock in Colorado sold yearling exposed hair ewes weighing one hundred and forty one pounds for two hundred forty dollars a head. Sioux Falls Regional Livestock sold forty two head of fifty seven pound slaughter wool lambs for three hundred one a hundred weight. That's one hundred seventy two dollars a head. Upper end of that particular draft brought three ten a hundred weight or one hundred and seventy six dollars a head. Sioux Falls also sold one hundred eight head of ninety seven pound slaughter wool lambs for one seventy one a hundred weight. Or one hundred and sixty-six dollars a head. Upper end of the draft bringing one ninety-five a hundred weight or one hundred eighty-nine dollars a head. Sticking with Sioux Falls, uh, they sold seventy-two head of slaughter hair lambs weighing ninety-one pounds for one seventy-six or one hundred seventy or one hundred and sixty dollars a head. 
Upper end of the draft brought 195, 100 weight, or 177 dollars per head as well. On the goats, Sioux Falls sold 40 head of 67 pound slaughter goats for 403, 100 weight, or 270 dollars a head. The upper end bringing 410, 100 weight. $275 a head. Producers Livestock in Texas sold 374 head of 73 pound slaughter hair lambs weighing 260 a hundred weight or $190 and 50 cents a head. Upper end of the draft brought 269.50 or $197 a head. Producers also sold 165 head of 54 pound slaughter goats for 424 a hundred weight. That's $228 a head. Upper end of that draft brought 434 a hundred weight, $234 a head. Grain markets this week, they were mixed with some lower undertones. The commodity market still impacted by the broader concerns in the financial sector. Supply and demand fundamentals did win out a few times, though, especially for corn. China made three different purchases, over 600,000 metric tons on Friday, over 191,000. So essentially, they bought about 2 million metric tons of corn. The purchases of corn from China come, though, as Brazil's trying to sell and ship as many soybeans as possible. They've got a record harvest coming in right now. Storage is at a premium if five. Uh, right now for soybeans. So we're trying to get as many soybeans on the boats, onto the water, and out the door as uh, so that way they can store the remainder of this crop. So that gives them little opportunity to uh, ship soybean or to ship anything like corn or wheat or anything like that. Uh, with it though, corn can't stand all on its own. It needs some support from wheat. Wheat was able to move higher there with plenty of support coming back in from the Black Sea and negotiations between Russia and Ukraine not really going as well as people had thought. So U.S. wheat still picking up from there as we go by. Overall, it looks like the market may be starting to encounter, though, that we're going to be range-bound, and this may pose as an opportunity for livestock feeders because we could see some dips, some pressure, especially if we get off to a positive growing season here in the U.S., there may be some opportunities for them to lock in some cheaper feed costs this year. Now, one thing that's not cheap, that is the hay market, Nebraska, Kansas, Iowa, South Dakota, Colorado, Wyoming, reported very little movement of hay supplies as the supplies continue to dwindle down towards zero. Those who are selling hay and have hay to sell, they're just squeezing every last dollar they can out of it. Premium quality alfalfa, limited trade reported, but probably 10 to $30 a ton higher than last week, uh, and it's not uncommon for it to be $300 plus a ton for good alfalfa. Lamb slaughter on the week estimated 36,000 head through Saturday. That's unchanged from last week, up 3,000 from last year. Year to date, lamb slaughter now 372,000 head, 8.1%, or 28,000 head more than last year's lamb slaughter. Live lamb weights this week, 133 pounds. That's unchanged from last week and an increase of 8 pounds from last year. Dress lamb weight, 68 pounds, unchanged from last week and last year. For your regional price report, 20 to 40 pound wool lambs, not enough for an applicable trend. 40 to 70 pound wool lambs, 225 to 310, 100 weight, 70 pounds and up, 172, 50 to 250, 100 weight. In the hair lambs, 20 to 40 pounds, 230 to 310, 100 weight, 40 to 70 pounds, 240 to 320, 100 weight, 70 pounds and up, 170 to 275, 100 weight. On the wool used, the stalker quality, 180 to $250 a head, slaughter used, 45 to 125 dollars a hundred weight, and on the hair rams 85 to 190 a hundred weight. Hair use replacement quality 130 to 325 dollars a head. 50 of uh, the slaughter hair use 55 to 160 dollars a head. Hair rams 55 to 160 a hundred weight. Kid goats 20 to 40 pounds 250 to 400 dollars a hundred weight. 40 to 70 pounds 225 to 450 a hundred weight. 70 pounds and up, 220 to $400 a hundred weight. On the goat withers, 70 pounds and up, 188 to 290 a hundred weight. On the does, slaughter does, medium to fleshy, 130 to $288 a head. Replacement quality does, 140 to $270 a head. And on the slaughter bucks, $200 to 315 a hundred weight. That is the latest here in your Midwest Sheep and Goat Marker Report. Check us out on Spotify or anytime at RuralRadioNetwork.com. Have a great rest of your day. Look forward to talking to you next week.